Hi, it's Joy, and today I'm going to be watching Winona Earp, Season 4, Episode 11, Better Dig 2. I am very stressed because Waverly has become a dark angel, she's become like a demon, everything is stressful. I, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that they kind of round up the la in these last two episodes. We're not going to be left on a hideous cliffhanger. I don't want to wait any longer. You can find the unedited version of this reaction on my Patreon. Let's go. Oh god. Mm. Well, she's changed her outfit. How'd that happen? The fog is no longer necessary. It helped Waverly. Waverly. And the woman who will not watch you become this. As you wish. <gasps> What the fuck? Just like Very powerful episode. Oh, I love the show. I'm so sad it's gonna end. I definitely think they thought it was gonna end or at least knew it was likely gonna end, which they're just giving us everything. So many huge plot moments happen in this episode and reach their completion and it didn't feel rushed at all. We finished off the Clanton plotline, sort of. I mean, there are no more Reapers, which is definitely a good thing. They won't be hounding Billy, they won't all be in his head. He is a Clanton heir, but he's going to change what that means. That just means you're the eldest Clanton. Um, I'm so happy he got fixed too. I really was beginning to give up on that. But he was just such a sweet kid and despite everything the mum did, he was so good. And I love that he and Rachel have a second chance and just he has a second chance and he could have gone and hid he could have gone and run and been like i'm getting out of here but he stayed he made it he became the clan's and took on that mantle knowing it could have meant all the reapers and everything to protect um winona and rachel and the people that matter and i love that and nedley helping was everything as well um cleo I, I don't i've never liked cleo but i do think she was just um a woman in a very difficult situation with an awful family looking out for number one and in a lot of ways you can't fault that Maybe she always knew there'd be a way out of it for Winona and she put herself first. So I don't need her in the finale. She can have just gone, left, been safe. Um, oh, just so much. So Black Badge, we, um, I suppose if they were considering potential future seasons, then Black Badge coming back could have always been a shenanigan. But Black Badge, you know, we're going to keep them at bay. This is our town. This creepy, shady organisation should have nothing to do with it. And I think it's especially the fact that they want to liquidate the population and everything. Like... Even if you truly believe that any cre anyone that's not purely human is evil, because a lot of them are, but they aren't all, as we have seen. Even if you truly believe that every single werewolf and vampire and any remotely demonoid thing is evil, there are plenty of humans still in purgatory. So they should have been setting up some kind of human checkpoint if they really, like, to get again, they just wanted to massacre another town. Um, I really hope that... I mean, we've got Jeremy who is able to he knows Black Badge inside and out multiple times over, he's going to be able to keep them at bay. We've got Nicole, who is the shield of the guardian of the, we're, of the Ghost River Triangle, and oh, I love it. Um, so that scene between Winona and Doc, I did not expect Doc to, to become the Clanton I was kind of thinking Winona would do it, but I didn't know. I'm sort of surprised Alice wasn't mentioned, because in a way I could see Winona not wanting to mention her, but I would have had the argument of if you want to kill every single herb, the last herb, the next herb heir, if I'm gone, is our baby. You want to kill her? That would have been another way to break through to Doc. I kind of hope they don't forget her. I hope she at least gets mentioned. I would like it to be that they invite her and the, like, aunt family person to come back to purgatory so they can have their baby girl. Um, but at the very least, I hope they mention visiting her. Um... When Ona sent her away, when the up air meant constantly being hunted, when being the up air, their curse was still intact. There was danger at every step of the way, but when making purgatory into a place of harmony, of support, of people looking out for each other, and I love this, they can bring Alice back next episode, right? Right? That's what I say happens, even if nothing else. Unless they ruin everything in the next episode, but it's shaping up for just a really lovely final episode, like a gift to all of us who have loved this show from the beginning. I'm sure there'll be some drama and some shenanigans, but on the whole, it looks like they're just kind of giving us a... I'm hope for crossing everything, they're just giving us a gift of a really lovely final episode. But so Winona and Doc facing each other, Winona knowing that he is in there, Doc would never do this and facing up to the idea of having lost the man she loves, properly lost him because he's gone and losing her sister. I love that Winona knew him, knew he 
he wouldn't fire at someone with their back turned, that whole plan. Then she had her plan with her brilliant shooting to save Rachel. It really reminds me of the moment of the fact that in the first episode of Winona Up, when they're like Waverly's hanging from the noose and Winona is able to just do an excellent shot. I feel like she bounces a shot off something as well in that scene. Real true Up Air stuff, real true Winona stuff that she was able to save Rachel from um, Holt and ultimately Doc. He saw it coming because he heard the whispers, he saw it coming. He changed what was in his gun so that he wouldn't be able to hurt them. It would hurt him instead. Like, get, like, uh, yeah, hurt. I was in an absolute state of denial throughout potentially losing Doc. I was like, it's not going to happen. No, no, it's not going to happen. And I'm so glad that it didn't happen because otherwise I would be a sobbing wreck right now. But for my Nona in that moment, facing losing him and losing him when they hadn't fixed things, losing him when she hadn't been able to. God, like needing a conversation and I think her refusal to shoot Cleo in the back she really shows that yes she was in a desperate place where she kind of felt like she had to do anything she could to save her family but now she's done the right thing she's learned from Doc's mistakes and the previous huge bump in their relationship was Doc choosing to become a vampire and that has now been fixed too because he truly wanted it I love that I love that she was able to try and make appeals to him and you saw it kind of breaking through she was also able to start to get through to Waverly through the angelly wavily cracks but being the angel was too strong i love rachel accepting her place in this family accepting that this is her family and you know family doesn't always say all the right things um i love how much she believes in them they believe in her she's got a wonderful support network around her and i'm really glad um so the clanton plot line is done the bbd plot line is you know put to bed for now and then the garden obviously the garden was spewing out the fog and everything waverly becoming the angel who's going to go and sit there and be the guardian was all it needed and i love the fact that the angel because when she kind of appeared and she had that sort of dark makeup y look the dark wings i thought she'd become like a demon like an evil angel like um jolene wanted but it seemed as though she'd just become an angel um and angels are that kind of unfeeling ruthless type um they're not like sweet loving fluffy people so i thought it was really powerful the fact that she said to nicole like well yeah we have the um the oh my god my name my brain has gone dead was she called the guardian still but like my nona and like she's done enough um because she has done enough and she was gonna go and take up the mantle she always should have taken but <sighs> jeremy knowing that nicole needed to go nicole needed to get to waverly also just a side point Mercedes being a vampire, I'm slightly terrified about that. Um, I'm glad she's not dead though. So yeah, Nicole going there and having this appeal because she, last time she got left behind, in the past she's had to leave Winona to go and save the day, but this time she was able to make the sacrifice. And I don't entirely know what that's gonna mean being the guardian of the Ghost River Triangle because she is just human or is she more than human now? Um, is she gonna genuinely live forever? Because she did say like, I'll live here, I'll, I'll, I'll be here forever. Now does she just mean in her human lifespan? Is that gonna start another, were she to have children, would that like biologically would that start another chain of guardian heirs or something i just thought that was so powerful because it made sense you know waverly wasn't an evil thing she was an angel going up there to be the guardian keep everything safe because julian left and there's been a lot of shenanigans happening but nicole seeing a way around that that she's already decided to take on the mantle of being the sheriff of purgatory and taking on a very proactive method of that of like i will keep everybody safe whether they're as long as they are a good person as long as they are doing the right thing i will protect them and that she's extending that to the whole area i'm not entirely sure how big the ghost river triangle is um but i love that she was without a doubt willing to take it on and you know she's capable of capable of it and waverly even as a weird angel not properly waverly knows nicole enough to know that that is a promise that she will be able to maintain and that she is willing to maintain and she just loves waverly so much and waverly loves her that it even was able to break through enough to make her believe in her and do the ritual the spell the transference of guardianship and in their book which she could read when she was an angel they were endlessly intertwined and i love that that the book is now in the garden the garden is now closed done now i am hoping the final episode of this show is going to just be a celebration of winona earp we're gonna have the wayhaw wedding we're gonna have winona and doc being happily ever after with alice that we're gonna see nedley and rachel and billy and just see purgatory which has always been this town with this dark past this dark curse on it that even though it was really the herbs and until recently kind of i guess until julian left all those years ago 
kind of the normal townspeople were more or less oblivious to what was going on, there was always that cycle of danger that came round and round and round. So I really do hope that we're just going to get a really fun, lovely one and a half episode for the finale. That's what it feels like, and I'm really hopeful. I loved this episode. Um, reminder that you can find the unedited version of my reaction on my Patreon. And thank you so, so much for watching. One left.